Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to look at sampling distributions. More specifically, we're going to look at sampling distributions of sample means. So what that means is we're going to look at what if we took a population data set and we repeatedly took samples of size n over and over and over. And for each one of those samples, we calculated the mean. What would a distribution filled with those means look like? And what properties would it have? Well, it turns out that because the samples can and will vary, while each individual sample may not have the same mean as the population, the distribution of those means will have a very similar mean. So let's take an example here from a uniform distribution. So we know our uniform distribution is kind of the rectangular looking box here where each value is equally likely to be chosen. So if we were to take a bunch of samples of size five, so if we were to repeatedly take five values from this distribution and then calculate the mean of that sample, we would see that if we did that a bunch of times, we would get kind of a mound shaped symmetrical distribution that looked a little bit funky, but had some interesting characteristics to it. We would notice that it, like the original distribution, it is symmetrical and it has a very similar mean to the original distribution. Now, if we took a different distribution, let's say this kind of bimodal, kind of funky looking distribution here, if we did the same thing, if we took a bunch of samples of size five and we calculated the mean of each of those samples and plotted those, then here's kind of an example of what our distribution would look like. We notice that the mean of the distributions is about the same, but we're starting to get a little less bimodal, so a little less funky shaped, a little more centered around that mean. Even if we take a nice left skewed distribution and do the same thing, take a bunch of samples of size five, we might notice while our means stay about the same, we start to become less skewed, more symmetrical. And so noticing that no matter what the population looked like, when we start to take these samples, since most samples should have a mean that is pretty close to the mean of the population, we start to get a more symmetrical look. And it turns out that if we take larger samples, in this case 30, n equals 30, not only do we start to get a more symmetrical mound-shaped distribution, we actually get a very particular and very familiar distribution. We start to get normal distributions. So we have a theorem that kind of states all this together, and that is called the central limit theorem. So the central limit theorem states that if you have a population with a mean of mu, and a standard deviation of sigma. And if you take sufficiently large random samples from the population with replacement, then the distribution of the sample means will become approximately normally distributed. And that's a very powerful statement because we have all kinds of ways of very easily and efficiently working with normal distributions. We have z-scores, we have functions in our calculator that we can work with, but that's not always true for different distributions. So the fact that we can take any population and take enough samples and then get something to be approximately normal is very powerful. Now notice the central limit theorem references sufficiently large. So what does that mean? Well, in most instances, instances, sufficiently large actually equates to samples of greater than or equal to 30. The only exception to that is if you're starting with a normally distributed population, then you don't even need 30 to have a normally distributed sampling distribution. 
but for all others, 30 or greater will get you a normally distributed sampling distribution. So let's look at some properties of these sampling distributions. Because we're going to be working with something now that is approximately normal, we know that normal distributions are defined by their mean and their standard deviation. So we would like to have a way of finding those. So it turns out that the mean of your sampling distribution or the mean of the sample means, which we denote as mu of x bar, is equal to the population mean. So we saw that on the first piece where even when we got the different pictures, all the means were lining up. So the mean of our sampling distribution is equal to the mean of our original population. The standard deviation, however, is different. As we start to take more and more samples, and in fact larger and larger samples, our standard deviation is getting smaller because our means are getting more and more clustered around that population mean in the center. So the standard deviation for our sample means, which we denote as sigma of x bar, is called the standard error of the mean. So we get that new term, standard error, and it is equal to sigma, which is the population standard deviation, divided by the square root of n, n being the number in your sample that you're taking. One thing to note about this is as n increases, so as n gets bigger and bigger, your standard error gets smaller. So the larger the samples that you take, the smaller and smaller your standard error gets. All right, guys, that does it for this video on intro to sampling distributions. Check out our next couple of videos for how we use these properties to work with sampling distributions.